Hello, pilots. Boy, do I have a good one for you today. I have discovered the joy that is the MiG-9. I was waiting for a sale to buy it after finishing up the I-250, but the flying fish could not wait. Look at it. It's, uh, I'm in love with this thing. It's such, a, it's such a great plane that does so many things well, and uh, I wanted to show a little of that tonight in this recording. Um, I also thought this was a fun one because I got hacks called on me. Um, so Wrangler, sorry man, no hacks. Um, just just a fantastic plane, that's all it is. Um, and I think um, maybe some confusion about it uh, with a Russian plane and people being not quite sure how to handle it. Um, so we'll go over some of that. Uh, so I've got an F2G on my side. I've got the P-80 Shooting Star and the P-51H on the other side. Um, and I noticed that our F2G is going for the airfield. Not something I recommend with the multi rolls because um, it turns into a fur ball really quickly over there. So, but, um, so rather than pull our eggs in one basket, I'm going to head to the command center and see if we can lock it down. And it ended up being more of a chore than I thought. But, um, right off the bat, you know, this thing has fantastic dive speed. It really does. And um, wonderful. I'm still learning how to turn in it. I think the, the kind of undercutting tail slide works well there. But uh, this F2G is a little far away and leaving the zone. So I'm going to let him be and slide back around. That F2G was my nemesis uh, in this match, by the way. I could not get shots to land on him. Most of these others I was able to get stuff in. And I am still dialing in the guns on this. Uh, I do not have marks on this pilot yet. I'm still, uh, still working on that. I need another one more point to get that unlocked. Um, but this plane, especially on side shots like this, I watch this and against air defense aircraft as well. But if you can get a, a side shot um, on a plane, like I'm going to be on this PG here to tear him up pretty good, right? Um, it, it ends up being, for some reason, working really well. I don't know if it's the profile or just the aim on it or what, but um, it's good. It's very good. Uh, and you can see, even without Marksman too, I'm hitting some shots there. And, uh, and those are against, you know, up to uh, 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 heavy planes, either, uh, well, I guess they're both my tier, the P228 and this one, and the uh, Angie, of course, which I've also been flying lately. And I'm just going to make passes, continue to make passes through here. Um, you know, the enemy is up. They set a lot of bot planes here to begin with. We've evened it out a little bit. And, uh, you know, with me here kind of putting things together, it, and especially with somebody's getting low on HP, should be fairly good. Now you saw me doing something there that I have practiced doing here. Um, you know, when I'm in closer like this, I go ahead and just left click as I normally would. Uh, but I've started doing something else, and that is when I'm diving in on the plane. And again, this is such good, and such a good energy fighter. Um, and I have mini map, mini map awareness time. P80 coming in. Let's pause and talk about the P80 for a second. And we'll come back to the the gun trick. Um, for some reason, the P80 did not pursue. Um, he broke off and decided to reset and charge me. And um, then he decided to go after someone else. And of course, while we, that was happening, we capped the, the facility there. But I'm going to come in on him, and I'm blazing speed, right? And he's turning, and uh, he turns right in front of me. And he has very little health left. And broadside with these guns, you know, not the most accurate, but the, the muzzle velocity is really good on him for being heavy cannons. And turning in front of them is a bad idea. Um, and then, again, he's going to let me just push on, right? I'm going to do get out to 1,100, 1,200 meters and skid it around. And now he's going to charge me with, um, yeah, like that much health left. You can see on the screen how little his bar is. And I'm at 420, which is another great part of the, that's a great number anyway, but it's another great part of the, the MiG-9 is it's a little beefy. Um, has a little bit of a weakness to fire, but hit points wise, beefy. So of course, what's going to happen uh, in a head-to-head -head against a P-80? I'm going to win. Uh, the 223 millimeters have range, right? So I'm already pumping out 340 damage per second before we get into the range of those cannons. And uh, as I'm heading to support the airfield, we end up getting it. So, like, fantastic. Here's my nemesis, the F2H, back again. Uh, the one plane I seem to have difficulty killing uh, in this match for some reason. Uh, you know, who knows? Maybe a spot pilot. Uh, and then, of course, my P51 gets in the way. Thanks, bot. Uh, you can move now Go somewhere else. Anyway, back, back to the gun tricks. Um, on this one, and that is this. If I'm 
at, at range, diving in on someone, as I, I like to do with this plane now, right? Um, then I don't just left trigger, left mouse button and, and trigger, right? Uh, what I actually end up doing is I start, I've got the secondary weapons uh, group slave to my, my side mouse button. And I'll start opening with a 23 at 800 meters and go ahead and bleed a little bit of damage. And then once I hit 600 meters, I'll kick him with a 37. And that's proven to be very effective. It also helps me range in a little bit uh, with the guns. Uh, so I kind of feel like I know where I'm doing now. <laughs> This is the sequence that God Hacks called on me. Now, um, there was already a suspicious, uh, I don't think you guys can see it because my keyboard is covering it, but uh, virtual keyboard's covering it there, but uh, there was already a suspicion, right? Um, and I think it was just he didn't realize he was almost dead from hit points. But watch this, the next 30 second sequence here and you'll see why I love this plane so much. The energy retention, the beefiness, the guns, it's fantastic. So um, I see the P80 down there. He's going to turn broadside in front of me again, and I'm just going to be chunking damage. He's also low energy. He's been dogfighting on the deck, um, which you can do in a P80 if you've got it set up for that. I'm not sure that he does. But he turned right in front of me going slow, and I am just going to absolutely shred him. So that's one down. And then uh, the SU-9 is going to turn in front of me, and that's two down in one pass. And then I'm going to loop over. The Seahawk is half dead, and guess what he's going to do? He turns slowly in front of me. Guess what my cannons are going to do? Shred him again. So that's three in about 30 seconds there, right? And uh, that really does wipe out their ability to come back. We're already up four zones to one at this point. Uh, and there's a lot of people on the respawn now. Uh, the sad thing is it also kind of cuts into my ability to, to you know, knock points out. But Again, side, you know, kind of that angle on this guy, and that's a, a nice, decent, chunky target there with a 211. Uh, that's fairly easy to hit, you know, without much injury, right? And I'm just gonna blast him. And uh, so one of the things I love too about this plane is its ability to change altitudes quickly. I think about going head on with the SU-9, I really did. I considered it, but you know, things were going so well, I didn't want to screw it up at this point. <laughs> And of course, he's a bot, so he gets distracted by the, uh, the air defense. And uh, uh, the P-80 is back and fighting over the airfield again. Um, I, I think I probably would have gone for the garrison or the command center at that point. But again, slow turn in front of me. It's not enough to kill him, but I'm going to buzz on. And uh, you can see he kind of turns there, but it's not quick enough, right? I, he's going to let me get out to 1,100 meters again. And we're going to go head on again. And I'm going to win that fight every single time. And uh, now I really do get, get some uh, hacks called on me uh, for uh, knocking him down a third time. I'm going to go defend the mining plant while this is going on. I don't want to give up that lead. And these bot bombers will flip it uh, given enough time. Nice thing about these cannons, too, uh, especially using the 800 meter trick I just talked about is uh, you can take on these. I'm not sure about, I'm not sure I would feel this confident if this was a player bomber, uh, but with the bot bombers, or the regular kind of tail gunners, yeah, yeah, you can see me kind of responding. I'm like, and I just said, said to him, you know, I've got cannons, you know, you've got machine guns, you're, you're going head on with me, it's not gonna work. And then I realized I typed my team instead of the other guys, so I had to retype it again. And while I'm doing this, I'm paying zero attention to what's going on around me, unfortunately. I kind of tunnel vision on, uh, on everything happening. And uh, at that point, you know, we've, we've got, uh, got our stuff in line there. The bombers have cleaned up this last zone. And I look up and realize, oh, oh Lord, there's a P specialized P-51H in front of me. I should probably do something about that. So I get a few hits on the rushing pass there, but he also does not uh, turn on me. And uh, just kind of a, an easy circle. And so we're gonna go head to head again. Unfortunately, I whiff one or two of my shots and I'm low on HP as it is and uh, I don't finish him off and he gets my engine. And I'm like, oh Lord, this is bad. But the nice thing is this thing dives really well. And uh, he turns off again for some reason. Uh, because of that, I start to regen health. Um, and then he comes back on and I think I've got enough taken. Because at this point, even though I'm low on health, again, I'm already firing um, on my cannons and he's got, a, I think it's close to 200 health there. Um, and that's, uh, that's the end anyway. We don't get to see who wins that. Um, that final pass. It, it might have been a tie. Might have, he might have gone to him. I'm not sure. At that point, though, I could have respawned at the air field if I needed to. Uh, but I knew we were getting close with the mining plant uh, rolling over like it was. So fun, furious, fast match. Um, 
you know, I've had several so far in the big nine, and um, it plays very much, uh, it's a very consistent plane um, in everything that it does. Um, and you'd think that it wouldn't be. You'd think the guns would be the part, because that's what I struggle with on the 250. I also struggle with the speed on the 250 a little bit, but the MiG-9 is a significant upgrade across the board from the I-250, um, and it's hard not to, not to feel joy. Look at all those critical hits, 22. Um, you know, knocked down 13 targets, 11 of them uh, bought or player aircraft. I only captured one zone, sadly. I should have been a little more on the offensive there, but, um, you know, I destroyed eight when defending, and sometimes that's, that's what it takes. Um, so, you know, really, really solid match in this plane. Um, against, uh, you know, a uh, couple of planes. Now, I was up tiered from them, granted. And, uh, um, but, uh, and they should have, uh, some of this is bots, right? They captured three zones between the two human players. We captured two zones between us, right? Um, so there's a little bit of an edge they should have had, but I think it was focusing on the wrong zones at the wrong time. And then also, of course, I am, you know, up tiered. But both of those planes could have beat me in turn fights. Uh, I feel fairly confident um, that that would have been the way to go, some maneuver fighting and, and uh, I just tried to make sure I engaged at a high energy state. And Wrangler's not a not a bad pilot at all. You know, he captures zones, he gets his wins. Um, so you know, and, and he like me has a weak spot for the uh, P40 and 105. So Wrangler man, he played a good match. Um, I think it was just maybe just not knowing the capabilities of the plane, right? And I've run into that a couple of times um, over the course of uh, the last couple of nights as I've played this plane that. People seem to think it's it's a yak, that it's a turn fighter. Um, and so no one tries to energy fight me in it, right? And you can see your cumulative DPS is 500 on, on the P80. It's not bad, um, but it starts at 600 meters, right? A little over 600 meters uh, versus where you've got uh, the MiG-9 at. You're dealing with um, a little more than that. You're dealing with you know 630, and I can start shooting at 800. Um, and it's going to take a second, maybe two, to, to close that gap, right? So I'm already putting between the two um, 23 millimeters um, 340 DPS on target for the first couple of seconds of our head-on before we get to the place uh, where those MGs uh, can start kicking in, you know, at 630 meters, uh, which is the same point that my 37 millimeter kicks in. So, you know, I get it. And, and really, MGs are, are good for sustained fire, but they're not as good at the burst fire, right? Um, and, and so you know, I'm going to win head-ons, especially against a, you know, a tier 8. So uh, just not the right choice of tactics. Um, but again, I think it's you know, lack of familiarity with the plane because you know, this was not the only, one I, only time I encountered that. Um, I'm just running as I do, and this bears you know, noting uh, based on some comments in my last video. When I'm doing tech tree airplanes, I do not burn tokens on equipment. Um, that's just not something I, I'm willing to do. Tokens are pretty precious to me, especially for specializing aircraft that I don't have time to specialize. Uh, I, don't, I don't play thousands and thousands of games, um, and I don't really you know, want to try to compete uh, at Tier 10 or at Tier 8 without aircraft that that you know just don't live up to the hype and so I save tokens for specializing my tier 10s right off the bat because uh, I'm keeping tier 10s I'm keeping my premiums I keep one or two others rarely um, this one may be one of them but um, so I'm not going to token any of my equipment and you know as soon as you improve your equipment it costs tokens to remove it uh, it's either that or you destroy it you know you sell it with the aircraft um, and cash is kind of precious as well um, again because I'm not playing thousands and thousands of battles so, um, which was also why it was a big deal for me to buy this at, at full price, but I just felt like I wanted to do something new. I wanted to give it a shot and uh, it paid off. It's a great plane. So anyway, I'm running the experimental lightweight power plant, which I think was one of the re uh, just pickups we had there. So net result is this is a little faster cruise speed and a little better maneuverability than, than just your stock aircraft. And then of course the gun sight. Um, and you can see here on the side, you know, there's a little bit of a fire problem, but again, it's, it's a beefy plane, chunky at 420. Um, and then, uh, you know, decent turn time at 10.6, uh, 10.8. It's hard for me to see on my screen. Um, and, and here's two other things I would point out that I think are, are absolutely magnificent. Um, one is um, that um, your dive speed at 1,050. That's great. It's just so great. This plane is so fast in a dive. It feels wonderful. Um, and then you've got, look at this, the, the maximum optimal speed is 825. You, know, you can doing, be doing 800 in a turn rate, you know, turn fight, and, and still be popping that, that mid-10-second uh, time. I can't imagine specialized how much of a beast this plane is. 
um, especially against um, you know other tier nines and tier eights, um, just with some of the flight dynamics on it um, that are kind of baked in here that you don't even need equipment to do anything with that are already good. And then you've got a great optimal altitude. And this is the other thing that that is great. That climb rate is wonderful, 172. That allows you to pursue uh, heavy flames when they're trying to zoom away and other fast fighters. Um, so it feels really good in the vertical playing with this. And you know, here's the other thing that's nice. This cannon finally lives up to its potential. When you're when you're playing the Act 250, or it's going to be the I-250. You know, look, you've got 25% more DPS with this 37 uh, than the uh, the previous 37 on the Tier 8. Uh, that's lovely. Uh, that's that's quite a punch that you're packing, and and same thing here. Look at these 23 millimeters on the tier eight versus the 23 millimeters on the tier on nine. You know you have you know roughly 50 percent more damage on each gun, um, and you've got more range to boot. So uh, even though there's a, a lower overheat time on these guns, um, it just overall the effect feels really good. They're they're much much better together. So wonderful plane. I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, you know, the other thing is speed here as well, by the way. Um, you can look and see the, the cruise speed and the boost speed and the dive speed are, are nowhere near what they are at tier nine. So um, I do think the I-250 specialized, which I am hanging on to it. I'm, I'm debating if I specialize and try it because I think it could shine with a little bit of polish. But the MiG-9, the flying fish here, doesn't it look like a fish? It looks like a fish with wings. Um, with a big open mouth in the front. The Fish is a wonderful, wonderful aircraft. There's one other thing that's interesting here, by the way. I've got the beta camouflage, the parade camouflage for the extra aircraft XP, which is also what I usually do with Tech Tree aircraft if I have access to it, uh, just to bleed through it faster. By the way, I also do not play anything stock, and I do not recommend you either. You get plenty of free XP in this game from the crates and everything else. Um, go ahead and elite the plane before you start flying it. Um, it will make a huge difference. So look at the camouflage on this one, though. All right, so here's woodland. Makes sense, yeah. Here's snow. Makes sense. It's the usual kind of thing there. And here's marine. It's brown and light blue gray. And then here's desert. It's green. And then here's the universal. It's blue. That's the blue-green that the Yak uses. That's the blue-green of the... Of the, the Soviet Navy, right? Like that should be the marine because it's blue. That should be desert because it's brown and that light gray tan, right? That's much more of a desert. And this should be universal because like it is on the other Soviet planes, you know, Russian planes. Um, they're just backwards. They're all backwards. I need to get in the file client, I guess, and reverse all that. And you got a cool chrome paint. I have not seen the need for it yet, though. Um, your cruise speed is already very high, and, and your energy retention is fantastic. And I love the look of this parade camo. It's just sort of, it feels very field field kit, right? And uh, I'm very much a fan of that. So um, if the MiG-15 plays anything like this bad boy, I am going to really enjoy it. It's probably going to become my favorite tier 10 rather quickly. Uh, again, just pointing out my pilot, uh, just an eight-point pilot, you know, with some basic skills. As soon as I can clear those last 200 and, and pull out a third point, I'm going to switch over from Engine Guru 1 to Marksman 2, uh, which will really, really do a number on these guns, I think, as well. So anyway, like I said, I'm looking forward to playing this, to finishing it off, and I'm also very much looking forward to the MiG-15 at this point. Um, if you haven't been over to Kame's channel in a while, he posted a video of the MiG-15 probably about two months ago that's really good. And uh, if you want to know more about the MiG-9 here, VBAT has two videos on the MiG-9, which I think are both uh, pretty interesting as well. So go check all of those out and uh, have some fun this week. Uh, we're waiting to hear news about the Tempest Marathon. Hopefully we get to hear that this week. Hope you did well in the spring ratings and hope to see you in the skies. Until then, good luck and good hunting.